Several years man that went to church, his dad did not go to church. And uh, when, he, when he got home from the church services that day, the daddy said, Son, what did the preacher preach on today? And the little boy said, Well, daddy preached on sin. He said, Well, what did he say about it? The little boy said, Well, he said he's against it. You know, so today we're going to talk about sin because I definitely am against sin. And I hope that you are as well. In uh, Genesis chapter uh, 1, we have God creating the world, right? And everything that's in it. Genesis 2, you got Adam, and he's naming all the animals, and God ends up creating a woman out of his rib, and that becomes his wife. In chapter 3, you have um, the situation where Eve is in the garden, and the serpent comes into her, and, and they begin to talk about this fruit um, that's of uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and she says, you know, I'm not supposed to eat that. And Satan says, you know what? God don't want you eating that because he don't want you to know everything. So she sees it, she, she looks at it, she lusts after it, and she takes it and eats it. And from that point forward, sin came into the world. And sin is, is basically a mission of the mark. It, it really means that, that you're not following God's divine law. That's what it means. God had told Adam and Eve, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Well, guess what happened? They get thrown out of the Garden of Eden, and guess what happens then? They end up dying. Now, hundreds of years later, but they die. So, sin is not this really pretty, nice-looking thing that many times we see, and then it becomes, uh, really, on the other side, something very ugly. Very ugly, very nasty, gross, and, and all the different things that you could say Sin is, is, is that type of thing. But you know, many times when we're looking at it, when we see it, we're not thinking about sin being that bad. And that's one of the properties or characteristics of sin. This morning, let's think about uh, four different things. One, let's think about how sin separates us from God. Now, some would say, what do you mean it separates us from God? It separates you from a relationship with God. So just like Adam and Eve in the garden, if you remember, they were naked and they didn't know it. So then after they sin, when God comes back and he begins to call their names and they're hiding and, and he says, where are you at? Well, he knew where they were, but he's asking, where are you at? And Adam said, well, we're over here. You know, we didn't want you to see us because we're naked. And God said, well, who told you? That you were naked. It's funny how sin will separate you from this relationship with God. Now, that's before you become a Christian, but even after you become a Christian, it's, it's probably worse. Because it can separate you from, the, from, from God. Now, it doesn't separate you from His love. It doesn't separate you from, from His care for you. But it will separate you in, in that relationship with God. Y'all, we live in troubled times, and I appreciate uh, John's prayer this morning. And appreciate, you know, thinking about the troublesome times that we are in. We are in troublesome times. Has there ever been a better time for us to have a great relationship with God? Because, let's be honest, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We have no idea about our country, what's going to happen. Now, nothing may happen. And then again, we may be not our country anymore at some point. It can happen in our lifetime. We fool ourselves in thinking it might not happen, because it could. But even if it did happen, what's your relationship with God? Because that's the most important. Well, if you allow sin to reign in your mortal bodies, you are separating yourself from God. Whoever you allow to be your uh, master, whether it be God or sin, that's who you're servant to. Romans chapter 6, verses 16 and, and, and following. So you have to make a decision. What kind of relationship do I want to have with God? If I want to have a relationship where I'm walking in His love, where I'm living for Him, where I'm following Him, and, and I'm doing everything that He's asking me to do, and I'm His faithful child, then you've got to really root out sin. You got to be on guard for sin. What is uh, you know? Name some sins. Well, okay, 
Galatians chapter 5, 19 through 21, gives you a whole list of sins. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, enemies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. There's a lot of stuff there. And it encompasses all of the different things. John said in 1 John chapter 2, in verse uh, 15, to love not the world, neither the things in the world. Because the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, they are against God. Well, that's sin. So we can, you know, it, it's easy to say, well, I know what everybody else's sins are. I can see them. What's your own sins? Do you want to have the relationship with God that you should? You cannot continue in sin. Paul said in Romans chapter 6, and verse number 1, he says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how can we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So you can't do that. Sin separates you from God. And you know, the thing is, sometimes we don't think about that when uh, we're, in the, we're in the midst of something, but it does. It totally separates us. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Acts chapter 26 for a moment. Acts chapter 26. When we think about how that, that sin does separate. When, um, <clears throat> when Saul of Tarsus was being called by Jesus, in, in Acts 26, Saul recounts what Jesus says to him. And in verse 15, um, Acts 26, verse 15, Paul said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, This is Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which I have seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Now notice verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith, that is in me. Here's what I want you to do, Paul. I want you to go to the Gentiles and I want you to preach unto them and I want you to tell them the good news of God, the good news of Jesus. And it's going to bring them away from Satan. It's going to bring them unto God and I'm going to forgive their sins. It is a change. It is a change in, in ideas. It is a change in the way I think and the way I walk and, and what I do because sin separates me from God. And what's, what's frustrating sometimes is members of the church don't see that. The sin that you commit separates you from God. You're separating yourself from Him. You make the decision. So if you allow Satan into your heart, if you allow him to, uh, to infiltrate you in just the least little bit away, you begin to separate from God. And the longer that happens, the more separated you are from Him. Well, let's just fast forward a second. Who's going to save you in the end? God. Why would you want to be separated from Him? All because I really enjoy this sin I'm involved in. Do you really? Is it really worth losing your soul over? Don't separate yourself from God. You need to be as tied with God as you possibly can. And how do you do that? By reading and studying, by praying, by being obedient, by showing God that you love Him through your obedience. But you need to make that decision. Here's the kicker. Nobody else can do it for you. You make it yourself. But y'all, sin not only separates you from God, who else does it separate you from? It separates you from your family. It separates you from your friends. What do you mean, John? If you're involved in sin, all of a sudden you begin to separate. And sometimes it's you. You're the one doing it. You separate yourself. Why? Because you feel guilty. You're doing stuff that you know you shouldn't do. You're involved in things that you know you shouldn't be involved in. So you separate yourself from your family. You separate yourself from your friends. No longer do you have that close-knit relationship, but you let these wedges be uh, driven in between you and your family and your friends. Wonder why in America we have a problem with so many people being down and out? 
We're probably the one of the most blessed nations that's ever, ever existed on this earth. And I'm not talking about people that are clinically depressed. I'm talking about people that are just down and out because, you know, I don't know if things aren't going their way today. Just because you have a bad day doesn't mean that, that, that uh, you still shouldn't be at least thankful for everything that God's given you. I think maybe part of our problem in America is we have too much time on our hands. Too much time. We have too much time for this, too much time for everything else, and try to entertain ourselves all the time. When there are so many things that used to took people's time. Used to, you had to work all the time. I mean, just to survive. Sin separates people from their God and from their family and from their friends. Secondly, this morning, sin also will, let me use the word spiral, out of control. It happens. People get involved in situations and doing things that they should not, and before you know it, everything is, is spiraling out of control. You think about it. You know, last week we talked about David and his sin with Bathsheba. Did that spiral out of control? Quickly. He, it started out with a little lust. And then, it, then he actually added to the lust when he sent for her and he committed adultery with her. Then he had to try to cover that up and he began to deceive people and he brings her husband in, he deceives him and, and tries to get him to do things he, you know, that he was not willing to do. Then he ended up killing him. That spiraled out of control. It just kept going and going and going. Well, what happens when you tell one a little lie? You know, it's funny to me, by the way, let me just throw this in. Funny to me that sometimes people say, well, you know, lying's not really sin. Really? Look at the Bible. It talks about lying throughout. Matter, matter of fact, Revelation 21 verse 8 talks about that all liars shall have their part in that lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So don't say that lying's not a sin, because it is. But anyway, you tell one little white lie because you're trying to, you know, trying to get by to your job or or you're trying to, to uh, make peace with somebody and, you know, they've asked you, hey, did you say this? Oh, no, I, I, I didn't say that. One lie does what? It leads to another. And it leads to another. And because of that line, that may lead to other sin. You know, it, it's interesting that people so many times... Um, will we'll try to cover up everything that they've done. They'll just try to cover it up. The Bible says, be sure your sin will do what? It will find you out. I guarantee you. I don't care what you do, where you do it, how you do it, somebody's going to know. It don't matter. Somebody's going to know. Whether your sin is gossip, whether your, your sin is uh, addiction of some sort, whether your sin is lying, whether your, your, your sin is any of the things that we mentioned earlier, witchcraft, hatred, bearing, simulation, wrath, all those things, whatever your sin is, it will find you out. And if you're not careful, it will spiral out of control because you can't control it. You think you're big enough to handle the devil? There's the problem. We think, okay, I, I can handle this. You know, I'm, I'm a big boy or I'm a big girl. No, you're not. You cannot beat the devil by yourself. Promise you. He is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5 verse 8. He is actually out there looking for the opportunity to get a hold of you. And I tell you, you can't win against him. Not by yourself. Now, with God, all things are possible. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Romans 8 31. But you fight the devil on your own, you will lose every single time. You've got to have God in your corner. You've got to have Him in your corner. So don't let sin change you to the point that you feel like, hey, I don't need God. Oh, you need God more than ever. Don't let sin spire out of control and destroy your life. Have you seen people's lives destroyed? I have. I have. I told y'all this story several years ago, but a friend of mine that I um, was preaching with in the county years ago, uh, I went to see him, and, and he went to one of our prominent preacher schools. And as we were sitting there talking, uh, I was looking at the pictures of his graduating class. He said, 
you know, Johnny, less than half of these boys are still preaching? I'm like, what? He said, less than half of these boys are preaching. Now, they dedicated two years of their life to go to school. He said, less than half of them are preaching. And there's some of them, a couple of them, who end up having an adulterous relationship with the, a, the secretary or something. I'm like, what? Now, tell me this. How does a man that is grounded in the truth, how does a man who, who understands what the Word of God says, how does he end up in a relationship with a woman that he should not have a relationship with? It's called sin. We can sit back and say, oh, that's, that'll never happen. Yes, it will. Don't put yourself in that position. Don't do that. Sin is deceptive. It spirals out of control. And before you know it, you got a mess. And then when people start trying to hide their mess, that's when it gets messy. That's why you got to admit your sin, confess your sins, and move on. Sin definitely um, separates us from God, separates us from our family, and it does spiral out of control. But let me tell you, sin has some serious consequences, does it not? It has serious consequences. Look over to, to James chapter 1 for a moment. James chapter 1. In James chapter 1, beginning in verse number 13, the Bible says, Let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That's spiritual death. Now, there's consequences in this life to sin, aren't there? If you're lying to people and they find out about it, what's the consequences? People aren't going to trust you anymore. If you're doing things that you should not be doing, and people find out about it, they're going, to, they're going to look at that and they're not going to trust you. There are all kinds of things that happen in life, consequences. You know, there's been people over the years that that maybe, um, let's just let's talk about stealing for a second. Let's say somebody goes into a store or somebody robs a store. Well, they get caught. What's the process? Well, they got to go to court. they got to get, you know, have a trial and all this stuff. During that process of going to court, somebody talks to them about Jesus Christ, and they begin to talk to him to, to that person about, hey, you know what? Jesus offers forgiveness. And they start listening because they're in a bad place in their life, so they're really listening, and they become obedient to the gospel. Their sins are forgiven. Their sins are washed away. But there's still consequences to their sin? Yeah. You see, they still have to pay the consequences. Whether that be going to jail for a period of time or, or whatever the case may be. There are still consequences in this life to sin. I can do something bad at work. And then I can repent of that sin and ask God to forgive me and God will forgive me. But if I've done something bad, I get in trouble for it. There's consequences. Same is true in our, in our married life. I mean... It's true in every aspect of our lives. Sin has consequences. The ultimate consequence is death, which is separation from God. Now, if a person in this life doesn't care to be separated from a relationship with God because of sin, are they going to care when they're separated at death, by death, from God? Absolutely. You see, in this life, it may seem like an easy thing to do. It may seem like the cool thing to do, to be, you know, have be running my own life and doing my own thing. But you're separating yourself from the one who can save you. At the end of time, there's not going to be anybody who's going to be an atheist. There's not going to be anybody that's going to be an agnostic. Everybody's going to be crying out to God for mercy. You better make sure you cry out to God for mercy now. Don't separate yourself from the one that can save you. Sin has consequences. It's going to cost you dearly, not just in your life here, but in the life which is to come. Let's go back to David for a second. What did it cost David because of his little sin with Bathsheba? That lasted 
Just a short period of time. Let's be honest. It lasted a very, very minute period of time. What did it cost him? We talked about it last week. It cost him his children. He had, he had a daughter that was raped. He had two sons that were killed. He was chased all over uh, Judea uh, by his own son. I mean, he had all kinds of consequences. When you look back at 2 Samuel chapter 12, is that not what Nathan told him? You're going to have all kinds of consequences because of your sin. Brethren, we've got to think about the consequences of our sin. We've got to think about what that means. Before you decide to sin, you've got to think about the consequences of it. Are you sure you want to do it? Are you sure you want to do this? And I tell you, we sometimes we are bad about trying to, to rank sins. Be careful with that. Sin is sin. Sin separates from God. Sin separates you from your family. Sin, sin will spiral out of control. And it don't have to be the big sins that we think of as big sins. It still causes problems in your life. And the consequences are the same. You have a sin that you're not willing to repent of. You have a sin that, that you're not willing to confess. It can't be forgiven. So you're going to pay the ultimate consequence, which is eternal death, in a terrible place called hell that's prepared for whom? The devil and his angels. But you know there's some good news this morning. There's a lot of good news, actually. But Jesus came to take away sin. Did he not? When the angel appears unto Joseph in Matthew chapter 1, and he tells Joseph, you know, don't be afraid to take this woman to be your wife because what's inside of her is of the Holy Spirit. And you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. He will save them. He will give them an opportunity to change their lives. Not just in the life here, but in the life which is to come. He will save people from their sins. When Jesus walks up in John chapter 1 and verse 29, John the Baptist looks at him. He says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Absolutely. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 20, He became sin for us who knew no sin. He became the offering of sin. In 1 John 2 and verse 2, He is the propitiation of our sin. He's the purchase price of our sin. Jesus said He came that we all might have life and we might have it more abundantly in John 10 and 10. Jesus also said in Matthew 20 and 28 that He came that He might be the ransom for us. Listen, sin is a horrible thing. And I know it's alluring. I know it, it, looking at it from the outside, everything looks so wonderful about it. Everything is so pretty. But inside it's full of dead worms and like inside of a coffin. That's, you know, for years and years when somebody has, has been deceased. It is horrible. You don't want to let sin reign in your mortal body. Don't do it. Now the Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. True. Romans 3.23. We also know in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is what? Death. Yep, that's us. If we sin, and we sin willfully, it's death for us. The good news, Jesus came to take away that sin. You don't have to live like that anymore. You don't have to live in sin. You make a decision who you're going to live for. When you go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 16, know you not to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey? Whether it's sin unto death or, or obedience unto righteousness, you make a decision. Now, I believe you're sitting here this morning in church at Kimmins, and I'm thankful you're here. You're here because you make a decision. You want to serve God. That's great. Keep it up. Keep going. Don't give, don't give up on that. Because that's where life is. People think, you know, all this, all the things in the world the world has to offer, that's, you know, that's really cool and that's not nice. But on the inside, many times it's not. And it leads to strife. It leads to hatred. It leads to division. It leads to people hurting so bad inside. 
It leads to uh, a lack of self-respect, a lack of self-dignity. There's so many things that sin leads to. And I say in the world, it also happens in the church. When we continue to sin as members of the body of Christ, we are separating ourselves from God. We are separating ourselves from our brothers and sisters in Christ. It is a spiraling effect. It can go downhill quickly. There are consequences to what your sin is. Well, Johnny, I'm not doing the things that the world's doing. Are you loving people the way that God told you to love people? Are you caring for other people and putting their needs ahead of your own? Oh, wait a minute. Are you loving your enemies and praying for those people that, that hate you? Friend, let me tell you, there may come a time <clears throat> we're going to have a lot more people hating us than already do. We've lived at a peaceful time for a long time in this country. But there may come a time that people hate us because we're Christians. You can see, you can see some things happening, but it could get it could get bad quick. Well, guess what? You gonna give up on God then? You gonna quit trusting Him then? Are you gonna quit putting Him first then? Jesus paid the price on the cross of Calvary for the sins of mankind. He took away our sins. Praise be to God and glory to Jesus for what He did for us on the cross. Please don't let, please don't think that sin is a beautiful thing because it is the most ugly, horrendous thing in the entire world. It will separate you from your God. It will separate you from your family. You keep doing it, it's going to spiral out of control. The consequences that you're going to pay are not what you're willing to pay. I promise you. Being separated from God in the eternal devil's hell for eternity is not what you want to pay for your sin. But there is an answer. And that man's name is Jesus. On the day of Pentecost, as the first gospel sermon was preached, and as Peter and the other, other apostles were standing there, the people were pricked in their hearts, and they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter answers and said, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Acts 2, verse 38. In verse 41, they were baptized. Verse 47, God added them to the church. Listen, that invitation is always open. If you never obeyed Jesus, believe in Him with all your heart. Be willing to repent of your sins. Confess your faith in Christ that He is the Son of God. And then be baptized for the remission of your sins. If you weren't away from the folk, come home and make things right with Him. Don't let sin cost you your soul. Sin is not something pretty. It is very ugly. But what is pretty is the love that God has for you. He loves you and wants you to be saved. If you need to come this morning, please come as we stand.